So we're going to make a video about Ada Lovelace, the world's first computer programmer. We're here in Hutton, just up the road from the University of Nottingham, um, which is kind of our angle as to why, along with everybody else, we're making a video about Ada, is that actually she's buried here in St Mary Magdalene Church. Well, she's really interesting, and it's quite clear that she was a very formidable intellect. People need role models. They need to see people who have gone before. But often those role models get turned into sort of genius-like figures who are kind of unattainable. And especially for women scientists, where there, there just historically haven't been that many role models. That's, that's partly the reason that we're in the state that we are. So there's often a, a tendency to, to turn someone like Ada Lovelace, try to, try to insinuate that they single-handedly solved an entire field or invented an entire field when that's not really the way science generally works. There's a big myth about the lone genius. Here we are in the chancel of Mary Magdalene Church here in Hucknall and up there on the wall is the plaque commemorating uh, Ada Lovelace. Um, but of course she's not buried up there. Um, she's down here in the family vault or actually this is just the entrance to the family vault. Um, the actual burials are pretty much beneath our feet. The reason why she's here is because this is where her father, uh, another very famous figure, Lord Byron, famous poet, is also buried, and she wanted to be buried uh, alongside her father. So in fact, there's a whole series of coffins beneath our feet uh, associated with the family, um, and on the top of the pile of coffins are Ada's coffin and Lord Byron's coffin. So Lord Byron, very famous figure, great poet, um, and generally speaking, great poets tend to get buried in Poets' Corner in Westminster Abbey or in St Paul's. Lord Byron was a sufficiently controversial figure, shall we say, that actually they didn't want him in Westminster Abbey or St Paul's. So he ended up buried here in Hucknall, which is actually where the Byron family is from. So it is actually the family vault, which is why he's there. And then when, when Ada died, she wanted to be buried alongside her father. I think it's actually, I think it's rather nice that actually it's, it's sort of subtle and understated. And actually uh, quite a lot of the story you're going to hear about Ada is in some sense, she, she sort of hasn't got the credit she deserved for what she did. And so actually, this is a sort of a, an appropriate illustration of that. But most of the time, science is done by people contributing to a field that's already there, taking it a little bit further, taking it a di in a different direction. Uh, and that doesn't take away from anyone's individual achievements, but it just puts them in context. So in terms of Ada Lovelace, you know, she did some really, really fascinating things. And that should absolutely be recognized because in addition to doing those fascinating things, she was a product of her time and quite a, quite a, a different figure for that time. And I think that should be recognized as well. There was clearly a problem that there were not enough women getting involved in science and engineering. Um, and so she's become a, a sort of a figurehead for, for that aspect of things. And so she's sort of held up as an example um, uh, of somebody who really was at the absolute top of the game in computing um, before computing had even been invented. Of course, we don't have a lot of women scientists from that time. And you can ask why. Why historically has, has science, have all these lone geniuses of these myths been, been men? Um, and I think there's a few things to recognize there. First, that Ada Lovelace and people like her, women like her, had a huge barrier against them in terms of education and just encouragement and reception. So she was actively pushing. She was pushing. She got, she got real solid pushback of people trying to discourage her, and she had to fight against that. She worked with a guy called Babbage, who invented mechanical computers, effectively. And in fact, he never built them. I mean, he, he, he designed them. Um, but they were never actually built, and so she was kind of working on a virtual machine in the sense that there wasn't actually a machine to work on. So Babbage designed this computer called the Analytical Engine. There was a write-up about it done by an Italian engineer who did a write-up in French about this, uh, this fine invention, and someone suggested to Ada Lovelace that there should be a translation of this so that the British people could actually see what this British person had actually done. So she translated from French into English this description of the analytical engine, so description of the computer. But then she added a whole series of notes of her own creation underneath the translation. And in fact, the notes are longer than the things she translated. So the main part of the document is actually her notes. And within those notes, she sort of gave the first clear exposition of what this computer actually did, why it was different from just a calculating machine, what an algorithm really was in this context, and even uh, some examples of the first algorithms, so in some sense, the first ever computer programs.
Well, you could think of Babbage as being the person who did the hardware and Ada as the person who did the software. And of course, you, know, you need both to have an effective computer. So in, in that sense, they're both the heroes of the story. On the other hand, the reason we do know about her and the reason she is remembered is that she was a woman of extraordinary privilege. What Ada had going for her is she was part of the aristocracy. And uh, so she had a great deal more freedom um, and money to do things and introductions to people and ability to move in society that actually allowed her to contribute in a way that the vast, vast majority of women weren't able to do at that time. She was prepared and she had the background and she had the um, understanding that when this very important moment when she first encountered Babbage and his ideas for the difference engine, she recognized what that meant. Well, there's an interesting story. If we go back to her, her father for a minute. So her, her father was Lord Byron and her mother and father acrimoniously divorced shortly after she was born. In fact, I think she's the only legitimate offspring of Lord Byron. He had plenty of other children, but this was the only one that was born in wedlock. So they acrimoniously divorced and Ada's mother was completely fixated that she thought that Lord Byron was completely crazy and, and she thought it was genetic. And so she was very worried that Ada was going to go crazy the way that she perceived uh, her ex-husband had gone crazy. And so the reason why Ada became so immersed in mathematics is because her mother was desperately trying to keep her away from poetry and literature and all the things that she thought would bring out the craziness the way they had in that poet Byron. And so she was actually trained in mathematics from a very early age. Um, and that's the reason why she became so fascinated by this area. It was that combination of, you know, personality, hard work, preparation, privilege and luck that all had to come together to create someone who was able to contribute. It didn't mean that she was remembered, you know. Her ideas weren't immediately adopted. Had they been adopted, the Victorian age might have been completely different. Um, you know, some people say that, that we might have had a, an, an information age, a steam-powered information age in, in the Victorian era. She's been rediscovered. Um, I mean, it's partly because there has been this cultural change in it really is now perceived as a serious problem we need to solve as to why so few women are interested in the sciences and the engineering. Um, and so there's that side of it. And also she's been rediscovered and so there's been, you know, books written about her, plays and all those kinds of things. So she's just sort of risen to the consciousness in that sense. I mean, there's clearly there's a fascinating story around that. And once you've got people interested in a fascinating story, then you can lead on into other things. So in, in some sense, you know, you shouldn't view her as the only reason why women should be interested in science and engineering is Ada Lovelace. But she's, in, she's a very useful hook in the sense that she clearly is a fascinating person, a genius in her own right. And once you get interested in the, that sort of more personal story, it leads into this wider narrative of, of, of women in engineering and science. No, it's coming down. It comes down fast. OK, so we're all ready. The chambers are very low pressure now. There's very, very little air in there now. It's like a, almost a factor of a million kind of down in pressure. All right, so now we're going to drop it in vacuum uh, and see what happens. 